Welcome back. Tonight's third and final presidential debate of 2012 will focus exclusively on foreign policy. It gets underway in less than three hours. It happens at Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida. And joining us now on the phone is the mayor of that city, Mayor Susan Welchel. Uh, mayor Welchel, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm sure that Boca is as ready as could possibly be for tonight's debate. So moving past that, we're curious because Florida, every presidential election, it always seems like Florida's in the spotlight and it's happening again this year. It's a toss up state. I'm curious why you think so many Florida voters seem to be so conflicted or the race always seems to be so close in your state. Well, I, I, that's a good question. And I think that it's not just the state of Florida that people are conflicted. And I think it's uh, uh, across the board nationally. But um, I think that the issue really, uh, certainly in the state of Florida, is about jobs and the economy. We've heard that over and over and over. That is not a new theme. And uh, the people that I talk to and that I work with, their greatest concern is that they want whomever is president to, uh, they expect the next president to deal responsibly with a $16 trillion national debt. Our people in the state of Florida are no different than anyone else. They are concerned about paying their bills and keeping their jobs, uh, their retirement system, whether Medicare is going to be sustainable. I mean, all the regular, normal issues of, of everyday life. And I think they really expect that the next president uh, needs to stop spending money, uh, you know, a trillion dollars more every single year. And it's also time, of course, to pass a budget. It's been three years since Washington's passed a budget. And uh, in our city and in our state, we have to pass a budget every single year. So it's really time for Washington to pull together, work together, regardless of who the next president is, and do what uh, the people of this nation expect them and elect them to do. And, and finally, Mayor Welchel, I know you're a Republican. I know you're supporting, or I assume you're supporting Mitt Romney. You probably think he's going to win. It, we won't tell anybody in Boca. There's no connection between Boca Raton and New York City. Uh, so uh, how confident are you in Mitt Romney's chances in Florida? 90 percent, 80 percent, 50 percent? Oh, I think it's an awfully close race, of course. And uh, I'm, I'm, on a personal basis, I certainly hope that uh, Governor Romney wins. But on on a, on a more wide scale, wider spectrum, I just want whoever wins to pull this country together, uh, get everyone working in the right direction, and let's stop hurting small businesses, and let's get the economy on the right track and energize the the uh, workforce in this in this uh, nation. That is the most important thing, regardless of who's the president. All right, Mayor Susan Welchel, uh, Republican of Boca Raton, Florida. A busy night for you and for your city. Best of luck tonight, and thank you for a few minutes of your time. Thank you very much. All right, moving back to foreign policy now, the focus of tonight's debate. Some are wondering if Mitt Romney will actually try to blur the lines a little bit between himself and President Obama. Just listen to what his foreign policy advisor said this morning. His overall approach is that we have to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. That's certainly where uh, President Obama is. We, ha we have a standard with this nuclear weapons capability, but we've all got to stop this program, and we need a diplomatic solution to do it, right? No one wants to take military action. And it's got to be a comprehensive strategy, and we should utilize a range of tools in our toolkit in, in achieving that diplomatic outcome. And Governor Romney's not going to rule anything out. He's been very clear about that for some time. His approach is... We've got to reach a diplomatic solution. That is, that is the key here, to stop Iran from moving forward. So let's hear, stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons, diplomacy, military is the last, last option, and sanctions. Okay, now compare that to what President Obama has said on the topic. America wants to resolve this issue through diplomacy, and we believe that there is still time and space to do so. But that time is not unlimited. And make no mistake, a nuclear-armed Iran is not a challenge that can be contained. It would threaten the elimination of Israel, the security of Gulf nations, and the stability of the global economy. The United States will do what we must to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. So, guys, help me through this, because uh, stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons, sanctions, diplomacy, military is the last option. That's both of them. That's, uh, is, is this Mitt Romney trying to close any separation in terms of policy when it comes to Iran uh, with President Obama or do they just think the same thing and they're trying to don't don't notice that I think the same thing the president thinks 
I mean, you could say the same thing, by the way, about President Obama and his movement towards President Bush in terms of the war on terror and in terms of Iraq and in terms of Afghanistan. Cer certainly could. So you certainly can absolutely, could. and I think it speaks less to the fact that Mitt Romney is trying to be President Obama or close the gap, but to the <clears> fact that this has been American foreign policy and it will continue to be, and it's the right foreign policy. We should take actions to make sure Iran does not get nuclear weapons, and those actions should be peaceful and they should be through diplomacy. I mean, there's not a lot of other options. So I think he's absolutely right, and so is President Obama to pursue it this way. And Mr. Romney tonight, he's going to focus, as you already know, on Libya. He's going to focus on Israel, claiming that this administration in particular is not as friendly as it should be to uh, our greatest ally in the region. That's what he's going to hammer on over and over and over. But I do want to make this point. I want to go back to the mayor uh, yeah. of the Florida city where the debate is tonight that you interviewed. And I think that most Americans, it's very important, listen to what the mayor said. Uh, because the backdrop of tonight's debate for Americans is really not foreign policy. Now, how can you say that, Dominic? Because how polling, can you say that, Dominic? Because <laughs> polling has consistently showed that the top issues for Americans are exactly what the mayor verbalized, jobs in the economy. And so I think that most Americans, they'll be looking for that gaffe. I don't think it's going to happen tonight. But they're looking to see, even though the president of the United States is on the stage, who looks more presidential and making this decision in the final weeks left of this campaign. You know, there's something else that the mayor brought up, and I, we're shifting a little bit off topic here, but let's get into it. Uh, because we want everybody to work together. We want people to get stuff done. And I understand that's a big frustration, especially for supporters or people who voted for President Obama four years ago, that there has been a feeling that he hasn't been able to get a lot of things done, and the Republicans in Congress have, have been blocking him. But are people that... Is the focus that much on let's get something done, regardless of what it is that we're doing? Do you understand? Does the ideology matter, or is it just whatever it takes? I, I don't really like Mitt Romney, but I'll vote for him because he can actually get stuff passed through a Republican Congress. Is that where we are right now? Well, I mean, I think it's get stuff done, like get the unemployment level decreased. I mean, I think it's not just a lot of stuff. And if you look at it, who has the record in a bipartisan state of getting things done? Arguably, Mitt Romney can say it's him. I lived in Massachusetts when he was governor. That is a Democratic state. He was able to get things done in a way he can differentiate himself from President Obama and say, look it, I was able to work across the aisle. I was able to get health care passed. I was able to work with Democrats in a way President Obama maybe can't make the same claim about his ability to work with Republicans across the aisle in the the last four years. So if you want to talk about getting stuff done, that is one way to differentiate but, you but, two. But Dean, but, but if Mr. Romney is the president and if the Democrats hold the Senate, will he be able to get things done with the Senate? Because, because I venture to say that should Mr. Obama lose this election, the Democrats are going to say it's payback time for how you treated this president for the last uh, uh, two, uh, last four years. I was going to say eight years, but <laughs> four years. <laughs> Absolutely. It may be very difficult, but if you're looking strictly at the track record, President Obama has not been as successful working across the aisle as Mitt Romney, but I agree with you. There's no guarantees that the Democrats will work with him any more than the Republicans work with President Obama. Well, wouldn't that poison the waters basically forever? Wouldn't that just be validating the Republican obstructionism of the last four years? We said we wanted our top priority was Obama not to get reelected, and look, it worked. It worked. So what if we just say, drag our heels and say no to everything? Well, I think that no matter what, no matter who wins this election, we know one of the two is going to win, but the, one of the biggest obstacles they're going to face is that if it's President Obama, it's going to be more of the same thing, unfortunately. And if it's Mr. Romney, the Democrats are not going to uh, forget how President Obama was treated. I know you will say that the Democrats uh, had control for the first, what, 18 months. And that's a very valid point of the president's tenure. But, but that infighting is going to continue no matter what. The point that the president is going to make, and even though this is a debate on foreign policy, I guarantee you somehow domestic issues will come up. The president's point tonight is going to be, stay the course, stick with me. Things are getting better. Uh, it may not be great, but look at what we inherited and look where we are at now. And if you give me four more years, we could return to the days of Bill Clinton. That may be the truth. It may not be the truth, but that's going to be his argument. Very quickly, because we're almost out of time in the segment. I, 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 we're not in a time of war right now. I mean, we still have troops on the ground in Afghanistan, but we're winding down Afghanistan. We don't have any hot wars. It's not like we're in the Cold War era. Is it? 
Should we really be debating foreign policy, or should the U.S. have a united front when it comes to foreign policy? I mean, is it at some point figuring out what exactly our approach with Iran is going to be? Isn't that tipping our hands a little bit towards the Iranians? Well, I mean, I think we should be talking about our place in the world and our role in the world, absolutely. I but that I think it's very, very difficult to differentiate domestic and foreign policy in the 21st century. So I agree with you on that. But our role in the world and who we should be and American exceptionalism and American going forward is absolutely an important question. And we're going to get into that and as well as some specific issues uh, in our next segment. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we talk about what America's role in the world should be. Oh, Dean Zeno. Look, at, look at how ahead of the curve you were. She, Jeannie's going to be back with much, much more next. <laughs>